Anyone see them and find them? Yes. Also? Yeah. Okay. Five million two hundred seventeen thousand and one hundred fourteen. That's how many people traveled to Yosemite National Park in 2016. This is a huge attraction and it's only grown over time. According to the park website, which was last updated in April of 2017 by park rangers, it now encompasses 214 miles of roads and over 11,000 um, campsites and hotel rooms. This is a big place for hikers, climbers, and kayakers from all over the world. And as someone who enjoys backpacking and climbing, I've become interested, interested in the history of both the park and climbing and how the two are intertwined. Over the last 150 years, Yosemite National Park has changed to meet the demands of the American public and has evolved in tandem with the sport of rock climbing. First, some background. John Muir was the first person to suggest that this land was protected and one of the first to ever climb the rock faces in the area. In 1890, he succeeded in getting 1,500 acres protected right in Yosemite Valley. We fast forward 60 years later to the 1950s. Climbing was just becoming a common occurrence in Yosemite. Great advances were, made, were being made in the era, such as the now famous Royal Robins, who climbed Half Dome in 1957, which as the movie Valley Uprising, produced by Barr and Barden in 2015 pointed out, this cemented him in history. He was closely followed by Warren Harding the set of the even taller El Capitan, a 3,000 foot rock face, uh, straight up and down, very steep. Uh, the 1960s also brought guidebooks to climbing because as James Taylor pointed out in his 2006 article, Mapping Adventure, modern climbers were obsessed with reaching summits and started to pay attention to the routes they were climbing. The era ended with the dawn of the 1970s, which brought the 1960s to Yosemite. The new generation of climbers took pride in being dirtbags. They were called the Stone Masters, or as they were most commonly known, the Stone Masters. Camp 4, where the rock climbers um, made their campground right at the base of the walls, embraced the 1960s counterculture. Guy McClellan stated in his 2014 thesis, Hippies in the Park, that many climbers lived like hippies and only differentiated in that climbing gave them a purpose. The rangers saw their lifestyle as a huge nuisance, and other visitors to the park complained about their messy lifestyle. But the climbing style began to change at this time. There was a new value put in free climbing, which is where you ascend the faces um, only by your own strength and skill, and only using bolts and other protective gear um, in, case of, in case you fall for safety. When the 1970s ended, a new generation arrived in Yosemite. They were the self-proclaimed stone monkeys, and they, they needed a new outlet of approving their skill. They turned to setting new speed records on routes that had already been climbed, like the 1986 backer ascent of Half Dome and El Capitan in one day, a feat described by Peter Croft in a 2016 edition of Outside Magazine. In this era, rangers limited camping in the valley to seven days due to high demand this wasn't really enough time for the climbers to get started on the projects that they wanted to climb, and so it marked the end of the last defined climbing era in Yosemite, but it didn't mark the end of progress in the valley. Thirty years later, a lot has changed. Mostly, climbing in Yosemite has become more accessible than ever before. The camping limit really changed the atmosphere, but it provided structure and it now allowed climbers from all over the world to come and climb on the walls for a week. Climbs continue to advance, with new speed records and new free climbing routes. And just in 2015, a famous route on El Capitan went, um, was put up as a free climbing route. It took six years of work and eventually 19 days on the wall, but they eventually sent the project and made it to the top. And just as a side note, um, this last weekend, a, a new ascent was made in Yosemite Valley and uh, a new record was sent by a female climber climbing uh, the hardest grade up to this point. The Time article of Rockstars by Emily Arome describes how this climb was reminiscent of Warren Harding's first ascent of the face in 1970. Despite all the changes to the valley and the atmosphere, climbing is clearly advancing with room for new ascents and records. In conclusion, Yosemite and Camp 4 continue to see thousands of climbers every year. During the season, 
climbers stand in line hoping for a permit to stay in camp floor. And on good days, the camp and the walls are full of climbers of all skill levels and from all walks of life. The, the, camp has, or the, the park has changed in every possible way, along with the sport, since 1860. The first example, or the best example, and most easily accessible, is in the gear that was used. When John Muir climbed um, Cathedral Spire in 1890, he had only leather shoes to protect him. He had no ropes and no gear, and he climbed alone. Today, shoes like these are easily accessible. Though the uppers are leather, the bottoms are all um, covered in rubber, as well as the sides and the, and the tops, even in the front, to assist in more technical climbing. And harnesses like these are also readily available to keep people who are less skilled from falling off so that they can try the same routes. Though climbing in the valley is different, it still draws and inspires climbers today. I can only hope that someday I will have the opportunity and the skill to give Yosemite a shot. Thank you.